that's okay. Find a new alternative that works for you both, and try to build an environment that's both peaceful and yet open to healthy arguments. Communicate, and put yourself in their shoes as you listen. Number four, always putting them first. When you love someone, you have a natural inclination to shower them with affection. Sometimes it even comes at the expense of your own physical and mental health. You go out of your way to make them feel happy. You give them gifts, tell them compliments, and protect them whichever way you can. That's all good, but are you also giving the same treatment to your own body and self? Remember that your relationship with yourself comes first before everything else, so it needs some love and care as well. Try taking some time off for yourself. Pursue your passions, hobbies, or even get new ones. Keeping your sense of independence alive is a way to stop depending on others for your own emotional and psychological stability. Own your life. You matter. Number five, always putting yourself first. This is just the exact opposite of number four, but it needs to be said. Just like how some people have an inclination to always put themselves last, others have the tendency to always put themselves first. This is not self-love. See, self-love means nurturing yourself to become a better presence all around. You give yourself time off, distance yourself from toxic people, and grant yourself the chance to enjoy life. However, when you're doing whatever you want to do without considering other people's feelings, you may come off as selfish. This is why it helps to be aware of your own actions. Consider how your actions are affecting your relationships. Did they seem to be hurt by what you said? Are some people putting some distance away from you? Keep an eye out for any possible indicators, and don't be afraid to face them head on if you do. Open up your feelings and admit your mistakes to those you feel you've wronged. It's a sign of maturity, and your loved ones will certainly appreciate the effort. And number six, harboring grudges. Are you the type of person who likes to hold on to a grudge? Holding a grudge is a defense mechanism, and some grudges last longer than others depending on the cause. Keeping grudges may cage you in a whirlwind of negative emotions like anger, bitterness, resentment, and hopelessness. There really aren't a lot of benefits to it and can damage your relationships. When you're angry, give yourself some time to let the steam off. Go for a walk. Do some exercise and try to get your mind off what is making you angry. After you've calmed down, reflect on what happened and try to build your way to a resolution. Should you talk it out with them? Give them space? Whatever it is, it's important to get to a conclusion, which is what harboring grudges doesn't do. Patience, understanding, and acceptance will help you get through it. It's certainly not easy, but you're more than capable of being a better person. Choose forgiveness. Have you ever called it quits with a friend or partner? Why do you think it happened? Please share your stories in the comment section below. We appreciate hearing your experiences with different relationships. Remember, communication with yourself and the other person is essential. You never stop growing as a person. What you experience now will be a lesson for tomorrow. If you found this video helpful, like and share it with friends that might find insight in this too. Remember to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more content. All the sources used are added in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.